Hello aviators! Today I'm gonna talk about the recent long-awaited throttle from VKB, VKB Stacks. The first wave of reviews is already 4 months behind us, so I will talk about Stacks and how I see it after using it for around 3 months. I'm pretty sure you've seen or will see more Stacks review videos, if you consider it, and so I will not repeat the details about all the variants and similar reference stuff. That said, there are four versions, and I considered the max version originally, but eventually I went for the more compact standard version with most of the features anyway, sounds the Atom module and smaller footprint. Standard version also has a richer accessory set, like five instead of just one detent frame and more detent pieces. Here you can see the holder for the additional detent frames and switchable buttons and hats. Switchable details were one of the main features for me, so there was no reason to go for mini or mini plus option, if you can afford it. Talking about Max, besides being a bit longer for my desktop setup, I also didn't like the idea of uh, covered buttons on the Atom module, without the cover of the buttons actually triggering some action that can be used in DCS, for instance open close of the button cover in the cockpit. Of course the Combined encoder can be really handy on the Atom module, but I decided to go for the standard in the end. I bought it in the VKB Europe shop in September when it was available very shortly, although for a higher price because of the area of shipping. I didn't actually realize that. I don't know what the final price for standard shipping will be, as even after 4 months it is still not available in the EU shop. I jumped the gun and ordered on September 8th, it was shipped on September 15th and arrived on uh, 19th, so it was reasonably fast. In retrospect I'm very glad I have it, considering the current shipping problems like booties shooting at cargo ships and so on. Now first things first, I really like the throttle and I will talk about some problems I've got with it, but uh, in the end I'm really glad I have it. It's not for everybody, it's a kind of Russian style, it's not replica if you want that. I'm sorry, but it really does well what it does, and it was a great upgrade from my previous TWCS throttle. It feels and weighs good, it is well built, the plastics are really solid, you know, people talk about it's not full metal, I don't care. The base has mountain holes, uh, but it sits really well on the desk as well, because uh, of its weight and rubber pads. Of the four options, the standard version has the throttle unit more forward, because it sits behind the larger stem module. It may be a problem on the desk, I definitely felt the difference, but I got used to it. Unboxing was easy, as it comes as a single unit, no assembly is required. You can actually just plug it and play, but you will eventually want to use the VKB configuration software for things like detent and button customizations. My unit came with super tight clutches, it took me a while to figure it out, I, I wanted to move the throttle levers, but it, they didn't budge. Uh, there is no manual, only a card with the link to the VKB playlists, but these are not complete replacement for some first steps leaflet. Uh, it is plug and play, that's not a problem, but for instance those uh, super tight clutches, I didn't know what to do and even the screws were so tight that they didn't want, they didn't want to turn, I was afraid I will break something. Eventually that was happy and of course no extended manual is needed, everything is online. The first thing that surprised me a bit was when I split the throttles and loosened them to my liking, the right grip fell on its own in the max area, because it's simply too heavy. Even with connected uh, throttles, if uh, you don't have it very tight, then it will gravitate towards the max position for a while, it will stop eventually, it will dampen, but if you lift your hand uh, somewhere around like 90%, it will probably move one or two percent more. The throttle has a nice long throw and feels very precise. Checking in the software, it likely has way over 500 if not 1000 distinct measured positions, which is plenty of precision. Of course it doesn't recognize all the theoretical 65k positions. Talking about the precision, there is a bit of stiction in the throttle. Uh, the dampening is very good, but uh, if you come to the throttle after a day, it's pretty obvious, but you will just, you know, move the throttle back and forth and it's okay. But even after 10-15 seconds, the it's a little bit sticky and your first move will probably be a bit bigger than you expect. But after that, uh, when it starts moving, it's very, very precise. The throttle travel, or the rotation, is not quite symmetric because the center position is a little bit away from you. 
so the throttle tilts much more away from you to the max throttle position. This is also uh, the position where it tends to fall towards the max if it's not really tight. This asymmetry is actually good uh, if you want to use the standard uh, version with the stem module sitting uh, you know, closer to you, because in the idle position, or you know, minimal position, you already stumble across uh, the back uh, triggers if you want to operate the toggle or encoder one, but it's still manageable. But if it went even further, it would be hardly usable. The hand sits nicely on the throttle, fingers are naturally on the main row of uh, buttons or heads on the forward side. As the throttle rotates forward, uh, the position of uh, fingers on some buttons is not always the same, which may cause problems, uh, sometimes on the heads, uh, but mainly on the uh, thumb mini stick. I can't find the specification for the uh, rotation angle of the throttle. It seems to be around 68 degrees, uh, which is good for precision but bad for substantial hand orientation change, especially compared to the sliding throttles. Of course, you can get used to it. When I saw the specification, I immediately knew I would miss some axes. There are no spring-loaded axes, be it one-way, like for brakes, or centered, for instance, for quick zoom. I believe the triggers, especially the front one, would be great if they were both axes and buttons. That would bring a lot of flexibility. On the grip, there are also two encoders where axes would be generally much more handy. Yes, there is a thumbstick which counts as two axes, but that one is quite specific and is uh, no good substitute for general axes. I mentioned the encoders on the grip. There are two of them and they feel really good, but I don't like them because they are no substitute for an axis and I will explain. Uh, every single step uh, rotates the encoder around 15 degrees, which means there are 24 steps more or less uh, for one rotation, and this is fine for an encoder. Uh, they are light to turn, and both can be turned accidentally, especially the one under the ring finger. The encoders uh, have one peculiarity, because they buffer or cue the events, and if you turn it really fast, it will take some time until all the events are sent to the DCS. From my experience, it is really on the side of the throttle, not on the DCS. So uh, the action can lag behind what you did with the encoder. And that is, of course, annoying for many scenarios. Encoders can be changed to axis, and I will link uh, the video for that uh, in the description. And this sounds great on paper. I don't mind the lack of any physical stops at the ends. You know, that's not a problem. But you always trade between speed and precision. I tried the left grip encoders for zoom and it was either too slow, many many moves of the finger, or jumping invisible steps. The pink encoder is uh, much easier to use, uh, you can move it much faster, but for the uh, ring finger encoder it's difficult to, to rotate it very quickly. Encoders as axis may be fine if the precision or speed is not important, but then why not use buttons for increase decrease instead? If available. This is why I decided to use one of the heads for zoom in out instead. Interestingly, encoder as an access does not seem to suffer from event queuing, which is good. Ignoring the discrete axis jumps, there seems to be no lag at all. When you convert the encoder to an axis, you will lose the button events from the encoder, which I consider not very flexible. I would uh, like to have buttons for, you know, the encoder up-down action for one plane and axis for another one. Currently, to switch from the encoder to axis behavior, you have to have different profiles and switch between them, which is annoying. There is an alternative. Uh, you can duplicate the encoder buttons with Boolean functions, and then you can uh, switch two buttons, the duplicated ones, to an axis. But this. <laughs> This adds the lag of the encoder to the axis as well, so it's more or less unusable. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the encoders on the stem module and I use them, but only for encoder actions. Encoders are not very flexible uh, for up-down actions, like for instance, you hold the button to rotate some real stat or something, or side glass adjustment in L39. The generated pulses of the encoder are always shorter than the constant press of some button, and hence much slower. 
So encoders have a good usage for things like radio channel selector or frequency band with distinct steps. That's good for, for an encoder. But it is not usable as a normal button and it's a poor substitute for an axis. And that's why I firmly believe that the axis would be much better. For instance, on one wheel on the pinky side and one self centering under the ring finger. There is just one truly universal axis on the grip, which is the thumb wheel. It travels around 270 degrees, which is three quarters of, a, of the full turn. And it's quite a lot for a single move, unless you start really deep under the knob and go all the way over it. But it is possible. But on the other hand, it feels precise. So that's a good thing. It could work as a zoom, but as it is the only generally available access, I will not you know, spend it for zoom. For being the only rotary axis on the grip, it has a few drawbacks. Firstly, you have to use it with a thumb, which means the thumb can't operate anything else, which otherwise can be the mini stick or three other hats, buttons, brakes, whatever. The thumb wheel is not very comfortable to operate. It is made of hard plastic with the point extrusions for better grip, but these extrusions are quite irritating. And the wheel is still slippery if your thumb is dry. I wish it was rubberized like the left grip encoders are, for instance. Generally, the placement and execution of this axis is a bit questionable, uh, but it is okay for things that are used occasionally. You can use it for fuel mixture, let's say RPM and propolis, that's okay. But it is still a shame that this is the only true axis on the grip. Let's talk about the thumbstick, which is a matter of taste and habit. Previously, I used um, index finger for TDC, but I decided to give uh, the thumbstick a chance. Thumb is more precise than an index finger, but the moves are at first not intuitive. When I used the thumbstick on a joystick, it was pretty obvious that away from me, like up, is up. Here, I wasn't sure. I thought that up, physical up is up, and but after that I realized that you want to push it away from you, like forward for up, and up is actually left. If you don't look at it, it all clicks naturally, and especially with some feedback, like if you use on the screen where you control some TDC, it will all come naturally. Now, because the throttle swivels, just like for other fingers, the orientation of the thumbstick and the hand position on it changes quite a lot. Maybe it's even more serious for the thumb, but on the other hand, because you often use the thumb with some uh, visual feedback, it is not such a serious problem in the end. I would appreciate if the thumbstick was stiffer. Most of the mini sticks are way too loose, especially if you consider that TDC is often a pressure-based controller. Also, it seems to be a bit stiffer to get it moving, but then it feels very loose. So it would be better the other way around, you know, easier to move and then stiffer towards the end. Thumbstick press is a bit confusing because it feels like a two-stage button. The head clicks after the light touch way before the actual action. I thought the button was uh, so light, only to discover that I need to press it a little bit harder. It's not very hard, but you know, there is a tactile experience before the actual action. It is easy to move the thumbstick accidentally when you want to press it. It is even harder to press it precisely when you have it deflected. Perhaps a different head shape would help with this, or some kind of disc shape. It uh, can be replaced, but uh, there is no accessory for it uh, included. It's a different kind of mount than the other heads. I was also afraid, uh, seeing the pictures, that the pointy end will be annoying for the thumb. But this is not a problem, really. It's uh, quite comfortable. It's just uh, the way how it operates. Uh, some other shape than uh, this cone would be probably better. But otherwise, it's a reasonable thumbstick. Uh, feels solid otherwise uh, and precise enough, even though the travel is not very long. Now let's talk about the killer feature of this throttle and that's the switchable modules for buttons and hats. Talking about the switchable modules, the accessory tray is cool. You will likely end up with too many buttons in the tray, I have all five there, but perhaps you will like uh, buttons on some positions more. I like the flexibility, so I will use a five-way head or four-way head with a push action instead. It still works like a button. It would be great to see more modules from VKB in the future, for instance uh, a three-way cradle with non-momentary positions like a weapon selector or with just one momentary position, some air brakes are made in such a way. 
Before you start configuring and calibrating the throttle, first rethink uh, what buttons or modules you want, because you need to reset the joystick afterwards, which adds new buttons and removes any setup sent to the device. So use the screwdriver which is provided before doing any other setup mentioned, especially the configuration in the software. I really love the two-way switch uh, with the press. I love the rubber feeling of this cradle. Originally it was placed in the radio position in vertical orientation, but I moved it to brake slot, uh, but it kind of covered the bottom uh, module, so eventually it went all the way down to the op exec position. It's much more handy there. Five-way heads are okay, uh, I like the rubberized cap in particular, and the castle switch is also nice to have a different tactile feeling on some positions. I use it on one of the thumb modules. At the front of the grip, for index and middle finger, I prefer the rubberized caps, because uh, especially when it's all the way to the front, sometimes it's difficult to press the castle switch precisely. Talking about the press action, it is okay for most parts, but it is possible to hit the hat sideways, and the press actually feels like a press, it sounds like a press, but it generates the side motion instead. And then there are triggers, which are buttons, uh, although they look like kind of levers, especially at the front, but they are buttons with a distinct placement, action and feeling. The front triggers are easy to reach and easy to press. Uh, the back ones, you can either use them with palm, but it's difficult to use just one of them this way. So we'll probably use uh, a thumb, which means you have to reposition the thumb from all the other uh, actionable heads on the side of the throttle. To finish with the grip, we have to talk about three more buttons. RST and END are these dark grey buttons that sit a little bit above the main row of buttons, so you have to reposition the hand or fingers, but this also makes them difficult to press accidentally, so it's okay. The red little finger button, designated Weapon Select, seemed hard to press at first, but I got used to it after a while. I wanted to use it as a modifier button, but uh, because of the position, hard press, and uh, it would probably not be comfortable, especially on the pinky. So I decided to use RST button instead as a modifier, and I'm very happy with this decision after like three months. It works really well. Eventually I really used this button as a weapon change, especially for FC3 modules, and it works fine for that. Now we're done with the throttle grip, but there is still the throttle base, which contains two more buttons, start and some grey button, and a five-way switch. These are also used for technical things like uh, switching the detent setup, but they can also be used uh, as a generic two buttons and five-way switch in DCS, no problem with that. And we'll get into STEM, which stands for Standard Throttle Extension Module. It is a part of standard and max configurations, but it can be also bought separately. It is a solid unit that provides a lot of flexibility, which is not part of the throttle base. Throttle base is really very minimal. So I'll just talk about the buttons very quickly. It feels really solid overall, although the metal switch and the case switches are a bit wiggly, but this is not a problem in everyday use. You will probably not even notice. Talking about the case switches, I like the three-way action that they provide. But strangely, the middle action, the middle press on the grey button, is much harder than the up and down action. Then there are eight buttons marked A1, A2, B1, through 5, and C1. They all feel good and I don't mind the plastic feeling at all. Tactile feedback could be better for the buttons. I don't like the C1 label that feels like the top of a button. When just touching around, it's not easy to know which button is which. It would be better if uh, B3, for instance, had some uh, bump on it. Uh, although the ridges around B3 are a bit wider than around the other buttons, but that's not so obvious. Uh, it's uh, perhaps easier to navigate from the bottom of the switch to K switch, but some extrusions or unselected buttons would definitely be better. The two wide uh, rotary encoders with a push feel good and they really work great. Uh, it's crazy, I said something positive about re-encoders, but these are really good. Toggle and flip switches can be programmed to indicate a button press in the neutral position. And the buttons can also be reprogrammed to generate a pause, which uh, is a short push instead of a, like a press and hold action, which can be practical for some applications. And I will add links to other videos that show how to do that exactly in the description. 
The three-way uh, flip switch is actually also an access. You just have to enable it in the software. And you can also open the unit and unmount the detent unit, the detent bracket from there, and it will be a continuous access then. For me, the three-way flip switch is more practical, so I use it only as that. And then there are detents, which are swappable. They can have five distinct configurations. It's very easy to swap the detent frame and switch the throttle to another detent setup. There are five distinct detent shapes, like types of detent pieces you can place on the frame, which is great. The screw on my detent pieces were actually very tight originally, and the provided screwdriver wasn't even enough. Uh, and when I used the better tool to get more leverage, it was still painful to hold the detent in bare hands. We should do something to use a lower torque uh, with that tools or something, because it felt really like I'm going to break it. It's just a feeling no one really likes, right? But after you prepare the detent frames, it is very easy to swap them. The thumb screw that holds the detent frame is probably unnecessarily long, the thread, but that's okay. Uh, switching the configuration on the throttle for a detent uh, frame is a matter of seconds, and this is nearly a revolutionary solution, really. I will add a link to a VKB video about how to prepare the detents and how to set it up. Also, the color coding of the frames is a great idea. The same color is indicated with the LED. So this is really a very well thought design, and while it is not like a replica of a true um, finger lift design, it still is very practical because you can generate various events like button presses as you go over the detent. There is also this uh, one, two event option setup which can generate different uh, buttons when you go up and when you go down. So it's great for mapping idle and stop actions uh, on the throttle. Detents definitely deserve more attention, so I will talk more in depth about them uh, in a future video. Finally, let's talk about uh, the cost and uh, let's compare it to the competition, at least theoretically. It was definitely less attractive than I expected in my case because of the aerial shipping premium, but I expect that the final EU price uh, will be more reasonable, especially because the dollar price is really competitive. I will not talk about exact numbers here because uh, each throttle has its different strengths. Uh, obviously, before the stacks arrived uh, on the scene, I considered either Verpal or Wind Wing throttle. I like the more generic uh, Verpal throttle a bit more, but if you consider the value added tax, which is not in the EU shop, and ship in, it will be probably more expensive than stacks. Wind Wing looked really good and price competitive and with the latest offerings it was really close but after my good experience with VKB Gladiator I decided to stay in the VKB ecosystem. I have uh, not had a chance to use WinWing solutions yet but uh, the base generally provides more buttons and also the feeling is kind of not talking about metal of, uh, of the base but I'm talking about the buttons you know that they feel better and, and more access actually. So eventually my previous experience with VKB Gladiator joystick and the flexibility of detents was probably the main reason why I went for the stacks. And I'll pause the review here. If you have some questions about the throttle, ask in the comments and I'll try to answer it there. And perhaps even in the second part of the review where I'll talk more in depth about the detents, encoders versus access, uh, VKB software and example setups in uh, DCS. Until then, fly safe and see you later.